heard of before, that we should always look at our, our career as our health. Um, can you elaborate on that? What, what is it that you had in mind uh, when you say that? <coughs> so these days we're all very concerned about our health, as we should be. We take care of our bodies and we exercise and we take vitamins. And when I started to look back on and my career, there are times where I'm a little bit, maybe I'm a little run down. I'm not sleeping enough. So I take, I have a deficiency, so what do I do? I take a little more vitamin C. Or I'm going to travel, and until recently I would take echinacea, whatever it is. And you can look at your career in the very same way. So that you have to make sure you never have deficiencies of certain vitamins. So what are they? So for me, when I looked back and realized those things that helped fill in those gaps, there were sort of three things. One was vitamin C, but it's not the same vitamin C that you'll find in orange juice. It was communication. And one of the things you've seen of everyone who's been up here today is that they're very strong and clear communicators. And that's a skill that you can either go and get training on how to make presentations. I'm sure there are people either within your organizations or that you can go to who can train you to be comfortable, to get up in front of people, to talk about it, to understand you know, how do you give, especially if you're an entrepreneur, and now being a VC, having, now sitting through lots and lots of presentations, it is really key for those people who know how to come in and communicate with us, to, to get those messages across. But the communication is equally important in any organization. How would, if Lorraine and I were working together, how would I get across to her what it is I want to communicate. Because one of the things we all do every day is we effectively pitch. A, a, a good friend of mine wrote a great book. It's called Pitch Like a Girl. But what, what, and it's by a woman by the name of Rana Lichtenberg. And what Rana did in the book is she effectively categorized everybody as either pink or blue, but it's not men or women. Because what she said was, we all pitch every day. Whether it's I'm trying to convince my 15-year-old that it's Yes, it's a good idea to get out of bed now so he'll be on time for school. Um, or it's convincing one of my partners that, yes, this is a good investment. We all pitch. So she actually categorizes people in certain ways so that when you're going in to pitch them, you try to get a sense in the first few minutes of who they are so you know the right way to pitch them. And then you also learn that as you negotiate. Negotiation is something that's part of communication, and it's something we all do as, as we pitch. So you know, it's also learning that skill, whether you have to go out and have someone train you or watch somebody or go call a lawyer that you know and spend time with them to kind of get that. So those are things that fall into communication. The other one is vitamin R. And we've all heard a lot. It's relationships. So those are internal relationships. We've, all, we've talked about mentors, which are really key, and find the right mentors. But one of the things that I also found was external were really important. You want those people that you can go to who can, in fact, tell you about things that you don't know. And that you can, one of the things I realized early on is I'd sit in meetings when I was younger with men, and they would all look like, God, they're all experts, and God, aren't they smart? And then I would think, why don't I know that? And then I would walk out and find out later that they had somebody prep them. <laughs> I thought, you know what? I can do that. So I started to have my gurus that I would go to. Somebody asked a question before about if you're running a team and you're not a technologist. I don't have a degree in engineering, but I actually have to get very much into and understand technology. So one of the things I would do is I would always develop a relationship with a younger engineer who, I, if I don't know something, I'll ask. So I would always have these huge whiteboards in my office, and he would go in, or he or she, and I would always have a couple of them in different areas, who would teach me about those particular areas and would show me what it is I had to read. And so I'd learn. I didn't know it, but I knew enough, frankly, to be dangerous. But I knew enough to say, OK, it doesn't make sense for us to be going in that direction relative to this chip. Because I was in companies where we were designing 70 million transistor chips. I couldn't design the chip, but I could figure out OK, wait a minute. Why are we doing this internally? Why aren't we going out and licensing this? And then I could help them do that. So you could help drive your team knowing enough to know what questions to ask. And I always had my back pocket gurus. And as a VC, that's exactly what VCs do. They don't know all these areas. What they do is they pick up the phone, and they call their network, their relationships. So you can do it with your company. You can do it internally. Um, and the third one is vitamin B, which is building your brand. 
And this one is probably goes back to what I said before about we all think that if we do a really good job, you know, if you build it, they will come. They'll only come if they know about it. So for me, it was learning about how to build my brand internally at the various organizations, whether that meant getting myself involved in a, in a project that would give me more visibility, getting involved with some you know, other type of deal that would give me more visibility, finding those people and developing, again, those relationships that would give it to me. Um, and it, it can come in different ways. There's a, a woman that um, Wendy and I know who's in the Forum for Women Entrepreneurs who actually started a network for women across her entire company. And she did a fabulous job of doing this. She built this network in about a year. It gave her such visibility in her brand, they then promoted her two levels up to take on, frankly, a job that I wouldn't want because it was so fraught. But she had negotiated all these things where she was basically put in charge with managing a relationship with a company that had been spun out who had a very, very, very difficult CEO. She went from one level and went two levels up. And she said it was because I did this. People knew me. I got up in front of the CEO. The board heard about me. So that worked for her. But you have to figure out for yourself within your organization, how do you build your brand? How do people get to know about you? How do you get involved in external organizations that will do that for you? So you, there's lots of components to all this, and there's a lot more. But if you kind of keep in mind those three vitamins, and each time sort of take, you know, say, OK, do I have a, where, where's my deficiency? You know, we all know we all need sleep. So other than sleep, what else can you do that will help you figure out how you can build your career? Especially next time we're having those five goals. Yeah, right. <laughs> Add one more, yeah. <laughs> Which, and they keep increasing every time you, uh, you look around. So, Lauren, my next question um, is for you. Um, we don't, it's not very common to see women um, at, at the highest level of management in high tech industries. Um, there are some industries in which we, we see it more commonly. What are the things that you did in your career? How did you position yourself that you were consistently? Um, treated at par uh, with your male counterparts. There was a word that came up in the morning. I don't want to use that, but you know, so that you're not, uh, you don't come up across as aggressive, but at the same time, you have the same opportunities. And you know, I love Hillary's uh, pet phrase: "How did you break the glass ceiling?" <laughs> 18 million <laughs> so, times, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's a great question. And I was uh, sitting at the lunch, and I have to tell you, just being at that lunch. Every woman I learned a little bit from. So we all have our own things that we've learned through the process that we can gain from the conversations that we have. And I think that's why the networking and support is so great. And for women, you know, these deep uh, networking relationships are very important to sustain us. But I have a few thoughts that I've, um, I think, along the way, uh, way that I'd uh, like to share. The first thing is resiliency. There's been lots of ups and downs in my career, and all of us have had our ups and downs. Uh, but I think the ability to learn from that and then come back and do it again and put yourself out there and um, take a risk is very important. Um, in fact, I think it's a little bit of an issue with women in many cases. They tend to be more introspective, more self-critical, and therefore um, when something happens, they may not step up again. Um, to generalize, I think men can sometimes tend to say, oh, it's the other person's fault, there's nothing wrong with me, okay, I'm going to go out there again, and they don't personalize in the same way. So I think women often um, sometimes, you know, p hold themselves back or take themselves off the track when men don't. So they don't stay in the game as long because of that. Um, s the second thing is self-confidence. And this is really getting a sense of yourself, and Hildy talked about that. As you move along in your career, really understanding who you are, what your strengths are, feel grounded in who you are, and feel comfortable moving ahead with, with who you are and playing to your strengths and complementing your weaknesses. It's not that we all don't try to improve ourselves, but I think there's more um, movement from being able